so um, grab whatever else you might want for worship today. That might be a candle, that might be a Bible, whatever you need to connect, to connect. We are excited that you are here. So welcome and good morning. I am Isaac. I am an intern from Vanderbilt Divinity School here at Glencliff United Methodist Church, learning to worship beside y'all, learning to build community and do some wonderful things. Um, so we welcome you into this space of reflection and worship. This is an interactive space, so please share any thoughts or updates in the chat box, and we will join on Zoom for discussion and time together after our message from Joy today. So before I make a few announcements, I hope you'll begin by sharing your joys and your concerns in the chat area. If you have a birthday this week, please list that too so that we can celebrate your birthday with you. So some announcements for today, some announcements for today. Um, we will worship in person at 11 a.m. next week. So yes, we will be on Facebook here like we usually are, but also we will be in person at Glencliff United Methodist Church. We'd love to see you in either places. Um, we have some COVID precautions in place. And like I said, we have a Facebook live stream if that feels more comfortable for you. And we hope to see you at one of those spots. Um, and then on March 20th, we will be worshiping in person again at Glencliff with our partners from Brentwood United Methodist Church. It should be a wonderful morning of fellowship and worship, and we hope that you mark your calendar so that you can absolutely join us on March 20th so that we can worship together with Brentwood United Methodist Church. Coming up here soon, Ash Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. We will have Ash Wednesday worship um, March 2nd. You are invited to join Belmont United Methodist Church, and they will have a tent set up between the community center and the main building where you can receive your ashes during a 10 minute reflection service. Uh, these services will be offered um, at 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., noon, three o'clock, and four o'clock. And then at six o'clock, there'll be a 45 minute Ash Wednesday service in the sanctuary. If you'd like to be in the sanctuary, get your ashes and also have a little bit of a longer service. Um, if you want any more information, you can find it at belmontumc.org backslash Ash Wednesday. That's belmontumc.org backslash Ash hyphen, sorry, that's important, Wednesday. Or if you go over and Google their website, I'm sure you'll be able to find it. And then also get your calendars ready because after Ash Wednesday or the start of Ash Wednesday is the start of our Lent, um, so of Lent. So we'll have Lent gatherings with um, Glencliff United Methodist Church with us. And hopefully we might get um, even uh, more folks from the Glencliff Commons. So maybe folks from the Glencliff Village might join us as well. So we will be gathering together on March 8th at 3 p.m. at Glencliff. So that's March 8th at 3 p.m. at Glencliff. And then again, on March 23rd at 4 p.m., we'll go to Whitset Park. Whitset Park, if I'm pronouncing that right. I've realized that I've never actually said it out loud and I've only ever read it. <laughs> but um, we hope that you would join us at one of those times, both of those times, uh, to spend some time uh, with one another and in nature. Um, preparing ourselves for Easter. That's what Lent is a journey, preparing ourselves uh, in wonderful ways. So we hope that you can join us there. Please bring a chair or a blanket if you'd like um, a comfortable chair to sit in um, or you'd like a nice comfortable uh, blanket to sit on the ground, whatever you need uh, for those spaces, please go ahead and bring those at those times. And then finally, for my announcements that I have written here is, we're continuing with building renovations so that the property at Glencliff can be a place of worship and gathering that benefits the community, including the church, the village at Glencliff, and the neighborhood. So please consider us in your monthly gift giving. You can give online either here on Facebook, you can give through glencliffumc.org, or by mailing a check to the church. Uh, we would greatly appreciate any ways that you can help us out as we continue to bless. Um, our, our church, the village, uh, and our surrounding neighborhoods.
Then also today uh, in our Nashville Minute, giving us news for um, what's happening around Nashville is we wanna invite you to at two o'clock today, two o'clock today, there will be a fish fry and facts um, that'll be at um, St. Anne's Episcopal Church on the east side. It's going to be an event where we talk about um, the development that's happening on the east bank is the city of Nashville might uh, develop that area and we wanna make sure that they have uh, the community in mind when they are making those sort of decisions so that we are making sure that we are building in Nashville for everyone, not just for folks who have lots of money and like to come and tour around, but for folks who live and work here also, is we wanna make sure that there's good affordable housing, good things that we can have access to that is for everyone, not just for folks who have the big bucks. So please come and join us and learn. That'll be today at two o'clock at St. Anne's Episcopal Church on the East Bank in Nashville. Also, we want to have our birthdays. It is a big birthday coming up, and but we actually are not celebrating it because it'll be on uh, the 29th of February, which we do not have this year. Uh, but if you'd like to join in celebrating today, tomorrow, whenever, or always, we are celebrating uh, Reverend Ing Ingrid McIntyre. So please send her some good birthday wishes. We love her and the things that she has done uh, to support and build this community that we are a part of. So please, please, please join me in wishing Ingrid the happiest of birthdays. So now, as we um, transition into a time of prayer, I have a candle here. If you have a candle that you would like to light wherever you are, I welcome you to do that too. We are going to lift some people up in prayer. So first, I'd like to lift up um, that Reverend Brad Grand passed on February 14th. He served as the pastor at Glencliff from 2004 to 2010, and we will miss him. And we keep his family and his friends in prayer for Reverend Brad Grand. I'd also like to lift up the names of Carolyn and Sam, of Josephine, Karen, Margaret, Nathaniel, Bowie, Pat, Annette, Joanne, Judy, Justina. I'd like to lift up our country that we can feel free to be who God made us to be. And that we can do that without fear. I'd also like to lift up um, the whole world that right now we are in a place of turmoil. I'd like to especially lift up peace um, for Ukraine, that they would be able to hopefully experience some bits of peace during all of this turmoil. And finally, if you'd like to bow your head, to lift up your hands, to do whatever you need to enter a posture of prayer and to hear these words. Holy God, Mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing. Yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, whose compassion illumines the world. Transform us into the likeness of the love of Christ, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. The same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. All these things, let them be true. Amen. So thank you all. Thank you all. I think I'm going to invite now Joy to come read the scripture, unless Joy would like me to read the scripture. But I think that's going to be um, the lovely Joy's um, way to take over today. So Joy, if you're with us, go for it. Thank you, Isaac. Good morning. My name is Pastor Joy. I'm one of the pastors at Glencliff UC, and I get to walk us through a brief explanation, or brief exploration, not explanation. Good luck explaining Bible. Uh, a brief exploration um, of our scripture this morning, which is Luke 9. 28 through 30, I'm sorry, 28 through 43a. And I am going to actually 
share my screen so we can read it together. Let's make you whole. Can I make you whole? There we go. And it says, now about eight days after these sayings, so Jesus said something right before this passage happened, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now, Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. They were sleepy. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone and they kept silent and in those days told no one any of the things they had, they had seen. On the next day, when they come down from the mountain, a great crowd met them. Just then a man from the crowd shouted, teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly a spirit seizes him, the child, and all at once he, shriek, he shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I beg your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, you faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While Jesus was coming, the demon dashed him, dashed the child to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. That is the word of God for the people of God. So I probably chose this passage on purpose in part because it talked about demons and I always think it's funny um, to uh, try and talk about things that we don't talk about in our society anymore. You say if we set demons in public, everybody go, it's not a topic that we really like um, discussing. And so I'm going to say two things first about this passage that I think are the most important. Um, so first is knowing that when we read the passages about Jesus teaching and parables, they are usually happening in couplets or pericopes. So these are stories. Um, it's not always couplets. Sometimes it's triplets. They're happening in what's called pericopes, which is when it looks like the stories don't go together. It's like, why are those two Torah stories together? It's because you actually need to read them together to interpret them together. So the interpretations that I want to focus on in these two passages are the, because this is Transfiguration Sunday, um, which is why this passage is in the lectionary, are the passages around transformation or transfiguration. So the first passage is the passage with Jesus um, on the mountain with his disciples when Elisha, Elijah, and Moses join him. And the second passage is the one when he heals the boy. So where we see, tra where we see transformation very basically is Jesus changes on the mountain such that the disciples are able to see his true whole form in and as God. That is what is significant about that moment. Um, there are several encounters up to that point where they have declared that they believe he is God, that they're following him because they believe he's God. But this is the moment where, for whatever reason, um, it's decided that they get to see him in his true whole form in and as God. And then when Jesus is healing this boy, what he is actually healing him from is what is keeping this child from his true, whole, God-given form. 
So remember, if we remember or if we didn't know, sin is simply which that turns us away from God. Sin is another icky. We're like, oh, somebody said sin and somebody's in trouble. Sin actually very basically is a concept is that which turns us away from God. Similarly, when we're talking about demons, we're actually talking about our behaviors and practices, which keep us from living our whole loved and loving beings in God. So anything that is in us that is keeping us from being, from realizing ourselves as a whole beloved child of God and from loving one another as a whole and beloved child of God. That is something that we would contextualize as a demon. So want to go ahead and get that out of the way so we can focus that when Jesus is healing this boy, he's transforming him back towards, he's healing him back towards his whole and beloved self and God so that he can also love one another more fully in God. So why is this in the lectionary this Sunday? Well, uh, as Isaac mentioned in the announcements, this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, which I call the kickoff to Lenten season. Lent is actually my favorite lectionary uh, season of the year, which is a little bizarre. I grew up back to Costa and we didn't do the like we didn't do the lectionary season. I first encountered Lent when I attended my Catholic high school and my my Catholic high, uh, classmates were like, "I'm giving up chocolate for Lent." We had mass and everything. I thought it was lovely. We had really great masses. But they're like, "I'm giving up chocolate for Lent." And I was like, I don't have to do that. Good luck to you. And I hope it goes well. And it's actually very common across denominations where folks practice Lent, that the charge is usually to give up something that presents to us a small temptation and that we learn from that journey of giving up for 40 days of Lent, which are representative of Christ's 40 days in the desert, what it means to resist turning away from God. So in the desert, um, in those 40 days, the devil keeps trying to tempt Christ to turn away from God. And Christ is resisting those temptations to turn away from God. So that's what we're generally doing over Lent. Give up something small to practice um, resisting turning away from God and staying with God no matter the challenge and no matter the difficulty. I love today's passage because to me, it reminds us that our call is to more than stay with God, but that to stay with God means to continue to grow and change and become revealed as our whole and beloved self and God. And that is itself the journey of the lectionary year. And the particular challenge of Lent is the part where we're learning to let go of things. So just quick backtrack in this passage, Jesus is revealed as his whole self, his whole holy self. And Jesus is not simply healing the boy of an illness. He is healing the boy of that which is keeping him, which is keeping the boy from his whole, holy and beloved self. And it's here that I'm always reminded of Reverend Anna Gyoze's charge to us in celebrating Lent. And yes, celebrating Lent, not simply getting through it or surviving it. As Reverend Anna says, our work at Lent, at Lent is not to give up something we can give that we can live without. It's to give up what keeps us from living. And I say that again, our work at Lent is not to give up something we can live without. It's to give up what keeps us from living. And that is what Christ is healing the boy of. What is keeping him from living as his whole, true, and beloved self? And that's what this journey of Lent is, is recognizing what is keeping us from our true and whole and beloved self and God. So let's be honest. We think change is scary. As a society, we think change is terrifying. My entire ministry, I have an entire ministry based around helping folks to manage the anxiety and change and to instead see and celebrate the opportunities, not just to grow further into who God has created us to be, but also to celebrate who we've been in God that we're so beautifully and powerfully able to grow. Change is not meant to be scary. It's an inevitability of life. We can only grow 
by changing. And the Holy Spirit wants more than for us to change. They want us to continually be transformed in and with God. That is what it means for us to walk our faith journey. It's what it means for us to believe and to live the unseen is to know that change is always coming to us, but also change is coming through us. And so we must agree to continually be changed and transformed in and with God. So before we transition to our Zoom conversation, so if you're with us on Facebook, um, we are going to drop a link for you to join us for a more intimate conversation on Zoom. I am going to leave us with this very beautiful quote from Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower. And she told us in her prophetic way, all that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God is change. May we be the change, not only that God invites us into in our lives, but also the change that God invites through us in our lives, knowing that this is an innate part of what it means for us to live faithfully and holy and belovedly in and with God. Amen.